Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Earthlings. Hope you're all having a good day. Peace out and all that. Right, today, um, I was looking at timelines and I was quite shocked because it feels to me like, I don't know about you guys, the uh, Platinum Jubilee was like years ago. That's what it feels like because it's been like rat -a -ta, 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 ta ta with PR pieces, with publications, whether they're for Meghan and Harry, against Meghan and Harry. So I was working it out last night and I, I had to double check and double check and double check because I thought that can't be right. That the Platinum Jubilee was last year in June. No way. No way. It feels like way, way longer ago than that. But I googled it and googled it. Um, and that's when Harry and Meghan were booed when they came out of St Paul's Cathedral. It was 16 months ago. Isn't that right? June last year. <coughs> uh, July, August, September, October. Four. Yes, that's 16 months ago, isn't it? That is not even, two, it's nowhere near two years ago. 16 months ago, Our Late Majesty was on the balcony for her last appearance. Paddington Bear, all that. Um, and then, of course, she died September last year. So there's been a state funeral, a national state of mourning, Commonwealth state of mourning, global mourning, everybody, really. Um, and from that, uh, William did an earth shot last year, his second one, he's about to do his third. And then, of course, there's been a coronation Look at all the organisation that goes into that. Uh, and the, the, the royals spent their Christmas as usual at Sandringham. I mean, you look at all the things that the royal family um, have done. They've just carried on, carried on, true grit, not let anything visibly get under their skin. And a lot has gone down. Now, I was going to say, particularly for any viewers on X, Maybe you guys can help me fill in some gaps because I started looking things up and I just couldn't get them in the right order. So I've got some basic bones. Um, so that was 13 months ago, our late majesty's death and funeral. Then December last year, only 11 months ago was the Netflix Harry and Meghan thing. January this year was spare. That's only 10 months ago. February was South Park. That's nine months ago. Uh, May was Charles's coronation, or was it June? I think it was May, five months ago. Um, and June this year, Spotify parted company uh, or didn't renew the contract with Meghan and Harry. So I mean, that's, that is grease lightning speed, not only for our royal family, because the royal family, even back in the days of Diana, Diana and Charles were married for 15 years. So that was a long drawn out process, wasn't it? The story, when you see people doing de trying to do depictions, which I feel largely fail, and I think they largely fail because it was actually unfolding over a very long period of time. Whereas we're looking at 16 months ago. The booing. And I feel that that was the pivotal moment, the booing. Uh, I think it shocked Harry. Yes, there were some cheers as well, admittedly. But the boos and they were ringing the bells with big speakers to try and drown it out. And even then, you could distinctly hear the boos and you could see the looks on their faces. And it, it, I, that was the point at which I feel Harry particularly thought, shit, because I think he always felt... He misunderstood his mother's stardust and popularity and when she died prematurely um, everybody remembers the boys, both boys, walking behind her coffin with Charles and Philip and Charles Spencer and so there was a, a global goodwill I feel towards the whole family really at that moment, especially those two boys. And so I think Harry had misinterpreted that global goodwill as uh, his mother's stardust. It's never going to die. I can do what I like. I can say what I like. 
blah, blah, blah. And I think it shocked the knickers off him and it was well overdue and it was well needed. And so that's why I believe that cracks in the relationship were, were forming around about this time last year, actually. I felt that there were, there were difficulties before, but perhaps not as big as that. And again, these are just my thoughts and opinions. Um, so that's, that's a lot that's happened, isn't it? It's like everybody was in fear of the Harry and Meghan thing and the book spare and, oh, they're going to make hundreds of millions of billions of gazillions. And, and it's been like... Well, we are. I don't think we've quite got to the crushing part yet. I see that the company, there's a very complicated set of companies around Endeavour, Endeavour Group, Ari Emanuel. There's something going on there. They floated it. They went public, um, <coughs> I think, in 2021. And um, the, their shares have not done very well. And there's a company called Silver Something that owns 71%. I think there's a bit of a hostile takeover or something. Their shares went up on Friday on news of, of Ari Emanuel saying, we're going to change the strategy of the company. So I, d I don't know what that's got to do with Megan or anything to do with Megan, but somebody did point out on X, they were giggling, I know I noticed it as well, that as soon as he signed her in April, um, the shares tanked by $10 a share or something so ridiculous like that. But they have gone back up since he said, oh, well, we're going to change strategy. And that's no reflection of Megan, I'm sure. I'm sure she doesn't have that kind of pull. I'm also very interested to see that uh, I think Tyler Perry, who I'd never heard of before any of this before. I know that's going to sound terrible to people who are real Tyler Perry fans. I personally never heard of him. Um, he's released some sort of a film, a documentary, I don't know. And he had a red carpet event on Friday, I think this just past Friday. You can check. Check everything I say. Don't take my word for it. And Oprah Winfrey was there to support him. What I found interesting was, well, where's Harry and Meghan? Didn't he put them up in his mansion when they were on the run during the COVID and they had nowhere else to go? Maybe he didn't want them there. Maybe they weren't invited. Maybe they weren't available. Maybe they're not friends anymore. I have no idea. But I did find that quite an interesting look that Oprah and Perry together on a red carpet being photographed. And uh, she's, she's not there. And I think she likes those red carpet events. Why not? I like them too. Um, I love to see all the pretty dresses and what people dressing up and the chaps. I think they're lovely events. Um, and I don't know if it was a proper, proper red carpet thing. It was in Hollywood, I think. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. I've already posted one on, on X. So can you guys help me fill in these gaps? I mean, there's a lot that's happened, isn't there? There was that Dr. Gabor thing. I think that was after the release of Spare, but before... Um, well, before Archetypes dropped them. I... Uh, I think it might have been before the coronation. I'm not sure. There is a lot. There's a lot. And, and I, whenever I personally had difficulties in my own personal life, I've found it very uh, helpful to put a chronological order of events to keep things clear. It's easy to forget what happened first, what came first, and especially when you're working with PR companies that love to muddy the waters. By the way, I emphasise I'm not a PR expert, and I never have been. I'm just interested in it. Yeah, there are lots of people who like train spotting. That doesn't make them uh, uh, civil engineers or, or uh, people who are in, can build a steam train. They're interested in it. Lots of people are interested in lots of things. You don't have to actually have a fucking degree in it to be interested in it. But I'm interested in PR and public manipulation. And, and apparently that's ruffled some feathers in the powers that be. Stop talking about PR. Stop talking about puff pieces. Oh, puff piece. Yes. Found another really weird one. There's been a lot. I mean, it just generally, everywhere I look, it's Harry and Meghan are getting divorced. Harry and Meghan are split up. Harry and Meghan are blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, there's nothing new there. And none of these publications, I think, know for a fact what's going on any more than the rest of us do. But I found one that I read that said, oh, he's particularly close to Doria. I'll put a link in the description to that one as well. It's in a Yahoo. I don't know where the original story came from. Oh, he loves Doria. He talks to Doria every day. He leans on Doria. And it was so overemphasised that Harry and Doria are close. I don't know why. I, I can't explain why. It just gave me the sensation that he's not even talking to Doria. And I don't know that for a fact. Again, don't take my word for it. I just, that's the sensation that he slipped his leash, if you know what I mean. 
and the rumours that he's going back to the UK and the lovely Neil Sean said he's heard that uh, Princess Eugenie is helping him find somewhere in Windsor, allegedly. I don't know if that's fact or not. So I had a look in Windsor last night and there's a rather nice little bed sit just across the road from uh, Windsor Castle. It's got a nice view looking up at the fortified wall from the outside. Um, there are also, actually, I'm, I'm only kidding, Harry would never live anywhere like that. There are a couple of properties. Um, I'll put a link to the description of the Windsor estate agent. And I'll tell you what I thought. There are two in particular, and I bet you guys, you eagle-eyed hawks, will pick them out straight away. They're like in the countryside, but they have lovely gardens. You could see a member of the royal family living there. There's a gate at the end, a perimeter wall. It, it's, it's suitable. For, from a security point of view, um, it's somewhere children would like to play and grow up. Um, and near Windsor Castle, there are two of them. And what I noticed about both of them is how cheap they are. Now, hold on, couple of million pounds. Okay, by yours and my standards, that's not cheap. But when you compare that to a 14, was it 14 million dollar? Or 14 million pound mansion in Montecito? Not that I necessarily believe they have always lived at that Montecito address. I, I tend to agree with a lot of people and it would make sense from a security point of view for Harry and Meghan to give the impression they live somewhere for the public to think when they actually live somewhere else. And I wouldn't criticise them for a moment for that. That is a very sensible idea. But there are a couple of lovely, lovely properties in Windsor definitely fit for royalty. I think one of them was actually slightly under 2 million. I think it was 1.8. So when you're looking at that, you know, that level of security and that level of type of person, that's not actually that expensive, is it? Um, <coughs> when I say I feel Harry's skin, I reckon he's probably down to his last 10 million, um, which might sound a lot to you and I, but if you've got overheads and you're seeing, it's really the ratio at which money is going out as well as the ratio money is coming in. That is true for all of us. So if you're a very high maintenance person and you have to pay for a lot of security and you have to, um, well, you have all sorts of other overheads, I don't know, like buying dresses that look like toilet rolls or whatever. Um, you have all this other high maintenance stuff going on. Let's say, ask yourselves this question. Would you feel comfortable if you woke up, for example, um, oh, it was June. It was June last year, the Platinum Jubilee. I don't know if I, I think I might have said September. But let's say you woke up on the morning of June 2022 and you've got 33 million in the bank, as an example. And you woke up yesterday morning and you've got 10, 8, maybe 4. You and I would both panic. I would panic because I'd think, Heck, I thought 33 million would last me and, and my children and grandchildren and great, 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 great grandchildren, you know, several lifetimes. Yikes, in just over a year, oh, Pac-Man, and I would have to sit down with some accountants and go, what the hell is going on? This is, we got to get a grip of this because it's unsustainable, isn't it? So that's what I've been looking at. And uh, now... Councillors of state, I have been trying to dig into that as well. And it would appear that this is a whole specialist area of law. Perhaps Daniel, the charismatic and wonderful black belt barrister, could look into it for us all because I can't really find any nitty gritty details. I can only find um, the general councillors of state, Regency Acts, uh, 1937, 1940. 41 I think and 53 um, and of course the 2022 one which added the Princess Royal Princess Anne and the Duke of Edinburgh Prince Edward. Now what I did find interesting is I found all of the debate in the House of Lords where they each gave you know really quite a speech and I read the first sort of four or five speeches of various Lords in the House of Lords. By the way House of Lords is not democratically elected. That is a whole, someone very correctly pointed that out. I was wrong to say that in a video, my last video, I think. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with, the, and I'm one of them, not familiar with the intricacies of Parliament, um, the House of Lords is a subject all of its own. It's a huge, huge subject. Um, but it, they, in my country, we refer to it as the unelected house as opposed to the commons, which is the elected. Anyway, that's just a sort of a summary. 
So these lords were reading it out because basically the king went to the commons and said, rather than remove Andrew, you all know this, rather than remove Andrew and Harry from being councillors of state, um, can we add a couple? And this had happened before when King George VI died. Um, the Queen Mother had been a councillor of state, I believe. But when he died, because the spouse of the monarch always is, but when he died, she stopped being one. But then the Queen added her again. So that, because safety in numbers, and they apparently act in pairs. But I mean, it's a really specialist area and fascinating area of law. And one of the lords had said, I mean, they basically all just said, yeah, good idea, good idea, good idea, let's do it. I didn't come across any objection to the idea of adding Anne and Edward. But what I did find was one or two of the lords, one in particular, and I forget his name, had said he had read that letters patent under section six, subsection two, allowed for a council estate to be removed if they didn't live in, in what he called Great Britain. Now again, legally, I think our country is United Kingdom, but Great Britain is a very common term. Is Great Britain, and from a legal point of view, again, these, this is a whole area of law I've never, never done. It's, this is very specific, like constitutional law which was general constitution was never my strength, let alone the pedantics and intricacies of letters pattern. And he basically said, it does say that it provides to have a councillor removed, but it doesn't say how long a person has to be missing from the country before, you know, what's the qualifying period? So I'd love to know if Black Belt Barrister could answer that one. And they have a great seal and everything, and letters patent are for other purposes too. Um, so I was looking for that and I'd be very interested to know because, I mean, Harry has not been living in the United Kingdom for a long time, about three years. That is a long time to be absent. Um, and then, of course, there are Regency questions. Should the unthinkable happen to Charles and William? There are Regency questions for George if you if he were under the age. If, when George arrives at 18, I think he becomes a councillor of state automatically if if William is the king. If Charles is still the king, then George will wait until he's 21. But the direct... <laughs> if I've got this wrong, you know, just tell me in the comments, because this is just what I glean. If the, um, the direct heir to the throne uh, is 18, they become a councillor of state, and the spouse, consort, or, or husband, wife of the monarch, they are a councillor of state, so. Um, but if Charles is still on the throne and George isn't directly in line, then he waits until he's 21, which is quite a way off, as we all know. Although, actually, not that far off. How old is the little lad now? Is he 10? Oh, they grow up so fast, don't they? It's awful about Matthew Perry. Um, poor guy. Poor guy. And I saw something this morning on X that he, he had said when he dies, he'd like to be remembered for all the people that he was able to help. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to help himself uh, with his own struggles, but he would like to be remembered for that. But he did say, I suppose I will always be remembered for friends, which is wonderful. And I'm glad that I was able to make people laugh. Um, but he would have, so I put that in for what it's worth. It's absolutely tragic, 54 years old. Um, terrible, very shocking. And I, I don't know why, because, you know, when you see people that are famous and they die, it's a shock to us, isn't it? Because we've had them in our living rooms, we've had them in our lives, although we've never met them. Um, as opposed to, and there are people, there are tragedies all over the world all the time. But I suppose it sort of, when there's a familiarity, it, it hits you that much harder, doesn't it? Because there was a, a hockey player died, very sadly, a freak accident, ice hockey. The, one of the other skaters' blades, um, oh, cri crikey, that happened yesterday as well. But because I'm not familiar with the guy, it's equally tragic that both men, that, that particularly the hockey, ice hockey guy, younger, uh, and Matthew, tragic. And yet, I'm. Uh, why is that? Why is that? You know, for Matthew, uh, must be because of familiarity. Anyway, I look forward to hearing all your thoughts and opinions, and on on YouTube chronological order. It's like a jigsaw puzzle because there are so many things. And have you noticed how things can be twisted? This is what our two narcs do. They always say stupid things like, oh, you don't know the history. And they rely on that. 
They rely on the fact, ask HG Tudor, narcissists rely on the fact that people generally won't remember the, or, the accurate order of events and they try to pretend one thing happened before another thing. So I think it's kind of important to try and nail down at least the last 16 months. Isn't that shocking? Only 16 months ago and look at everything that has happened. Good gracious. Anyway, have a fabulous day. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you as always.